Okay, I'm very happy to announce to you uh, the talk Security Cannot Be Bought, uh, held to you by Maridis. She's a regular at Chaos Events since 2007, and she's a security engineer who's managing uh, corporate IT. So, Maridis, the stage is yours. Three years ago, I was lucky enough to start a new job in a company where when it came to modern IT infrastructure, it was a late boomer. Family-run company, in the business for over 70 years. So security didn't have a high value. Even only IT only got higher importance in about 2010. Imagine that. Luckily, luckily for me again, there was full management commitment on security when I started in that company. Just to give you some numbers about the company. Right now, we have around 150 Windows servers and about 2,000 Active Directory users. So it's not a small company anymore. Active Directory is a good keyword. Today, in this talk, we will solely focus on Windows Active Directory environments, but some parts could be interesting for non-Active Directory environments as well. When it comes to security requirements, we have to imagine a scale. On the one end of the scale, there are like banks, uh, high-tech industry, electricity suppliers. But on the other end of that scale, there are small and medium enterprises, traditional enterprises, low-tech companies, or family-run companies. And today, we will focus on the first third of that scale for the low-tech industry companies, because their requirements are way different from that high-tech industry companies. And as I have worked in such a company for three years, I want to share my knowledge I gained in these three years with you today. First, we need to define what is the threat we protect ourselves from. And in these type of companies, it's not targeted, in, targeted industrial sabotage, because to be honest, we would have no chance at all. No chance. What we protect these companies from is shotgun attacks, mainly in the form of automated malware. Can't we just install a super fancy security solution or two or three, right, and then we are safe? No. Unfortunately, we have limited resources. And these super fancy solutions, they need both people and money. And in, some, in these type of companies, there isn't even one full-time employee responsible for security. And also money sometimes is an issue. I am a passionate climber. And when I'm in front of a wall like this, sometimes I cannot see a way through. It seems impossible for me to climb. And the same goes for tech measures to improve security. There is so much information nowadays that's a curse and a blessing. There's Reddit, blogs, conferences. So you stand in front of your IT environment, that's that wall, and you have a trillion of ideas in your head, but you just don't know where or how to start. And today, in this talk, I want to share the knowledge, or I want to show you a path through that wall. So here are three sections we want to climb together today. It's people, organization, and of course, tech, tech measures. Let's start with people first. Why people? Because behind that Windows Active Directory user accounts are people. The colleagues you work with are people. Your customers are people. I know. It's very, very, very tempting. Something happened again. Company got hacked. Millions of credit data records leaked. That's what you want to do, right? Facepalm. The thing is, security people tend to believe everyone else is stupid, incompetent, sleazy, lazy, whatever. But it doesn't matter if it's because of missing knowledge missing technology, or even laziness. Because in the end, 
you are responsible for the security in your company. You are responsible for your company not getting hacked. And how do you think a sysadmin will feel if you facepalm at him, if you blame him? Will he enjoy working with you? Will he even come up with, your own, with his own ideas? Or will he rather play hide and seek with you? So, honestly, stop complaining. Complaining is not acting, and not acting is not taking responsibility. And not taking responsibility is failing. That's all what's to say there. To add a little practical example, what I mean with that, imagine you wanted to introduce labs in your company, or probably some of you already have, local area password solution, where there's, for each client, a different password, and it resets it automatically. So imagine you would have um, one password for all your clients, and you can be the admin there. It's maybe not that good. So you try, you could either go to your sysadmins and you will like command that labs needs to be installed. Or maybe you could talk to them, listen to them. And they probably understand the necessity behind it if you explain to them because it's just sometimes just missing knowledge. But the issue they have is you cannot copy the password from the lab GUI to a password request in Windows. So when Secure Desktop is enabled, you can see it's, it's black, you can't do this. But once you disable Secure Desktop, that's possible. Unfortunately, that's not a password dialog, um, but just imagine one. And the question here is now, will we disable Secure Desktop, we lose a security feature, or would we keep it? If we, if, we secure, if we disable Secure Desktop, we then could introduce labs, have the full support of all the tech guys. What would you choose? When it comes to people and working together with people, we need to visualize what we want with them. Do you want to work in a 1950 Henry Ford assembly line? where you just do one task the whole time? Or would you prefer to work in a modern Japanese assembly line, where you work together with your colleagues, where you can bring up your own ideas? In the next part, we're going to talk about how to introduce this Japanese assembly line in our security organization. When we think about our security organization, there's two requirements we need to fulfill. Number one, see the overall process, like in the assembly line. And number two, have goals and have an end in mind. See? And that's the thing. Security never has an end, right? It's a continuous process. It goes on forever. But that's not a concept you can sell. People work like this. We want a task. We want to complete the task. We want to go home, be happy that we achieved something today. So our job here now is create these achievement moments. How do we do that? Here are three suggestions. Make the current status visible. This means create um, statistics, meaningful statistics. Here's an example, total vulnerabilities in the Windows Server um, environment. You can see how this goes down. Uh, make a common goal, like it always must be below 500, whatever. Number two, create brick programs. Make the goals visible. For example, we wanted to improve in, in Windows and environment security, so we draw these uh, fancy little bricks. There was goals behind that, things we wanted to discuss. And once it's done, it was colors. Print that out, you can put it somewhere in the office. It's made visible. Number three, at one point, you probably already have a lot of ideas. At best, not only yours, so, but also from your colleagues or your boss. And you need to prioritize them, because you can never do all of them. But before you prioritize them, you need to collect them and group them. 
What we use there is, is called Redman. It's actually from um, software development. So we would have several ideas collected, and we would also rate them. You can see that on the right side, like a feasibility and effectiveness. Unfortunately, this is not a talk about risk management. So I just added the link on how we do that at the end of the slides. So for this, for this part, prioritization is the key. And that all comes up in three steps, like these are going, building up on each other. It's past, present, and future. In the past, you see what you did in the current status. The brick programs define what you do now, your goals. And the idea repository is your future, what you want to do. Let's climb our last section together. When I talk about tech and Windows Active Directory environments, an attack that's used very often is either pass the hash or pass the ticket. It's meaning you don't try to steal a password, you try to steal a password um, hash or a Kerberos ticket from the authentication process. So the first core principle to defend against this is the three-tier model that's also published and very well documented by Microsoft. So what you do, you split your assets in three different levels, sometimes more. And typically, these levels would be tier zero, your domain controllers, tier one, your servers, and tier three, your admin clients or clients. And on each level, you have a user. So you don't only have one user, you have two, three, four, five users. And the next step is you restrict access. So this is the technical implementation of the need to know principle that's so often in, in security management. So tier zero, admin cannot log in in a tier one or tier two device. Because this core principle is, of course, not the only thing we can do. I prepared some quick wins, I believe, uh, easy to implement and do not cost anything. These three are my three favorite ones when it comes to free tools. Use delegation. They are account operators. It's a group in Active Directory where you can um, um, add and remove group or membership. And because permissions are often um, steered, um, given by Active Directory groups, that's a sensible group. And you could use delegation best done with PowerShell. There's a GUI, but with PowerShell, it's, it's better. So let's say that from a specific country or branch, a sysadmin can just um, work on specific OOs to add or remove membership. Partial constraints language mode, like PowerShell is often used in attacks. What you can do is, with a GPO, that the PowerShell cannot do exit all comment, uh, execute all comments. But of course, this is only a small security improvement because that can be reversed. But against malware, that's a very good start. And the third one, it has the biggest bar, reduce membership in high value groups. That's a task that has no end, no goal. <laughs> administrators, enterprise administrators, schema administrators, STTM administrators, check these groups all the time. There are four more. Um, I just want to quickly note, I'm not talking about them because 20 minutes is not enough. Maybe passwords in group policy preferences is something, just quickly there is in group policy pre preferences. Sometimes a clear text passwords with a script, you can just check that regularly. Of course, password manager and password policy is nothing new, but it's easy and it's free. There are also so-called trackable quick wins because many companies don't have a security uh, seam, like because it's expensive, but you can build up your own security monitor monitoring. And there are five um, trackable quick wins that I believe are nice. What we do is like we have shadow tasks, and these execute a PowerShell script. For example, we check if the SSL certificates are running out. We check if to this previously managed high privilege groups, users are added. If a domain admin logs in, because I believe nobody needs to be domain admin, so I want to know when somebody uses this domain admin. I also gave up my domain admin before Christmas. There are sometimes passwords in Active Directory description fields, because that's convenient, right? <laughs> 
And of course, if a new admin is added to a local client or service, because we don't want that. If you have a little bit more time, four of them reduce Java and Flash. Of course, no client and no server needs Flash anymore. It's actually going to die end of 2020. Java should just be installed on request, of course. Um, the SMB uh, versions and the encryption, as well as the database connection, you just have to check them all the time, what's going on, and where are the passwords, passwords, hashes. That's one close to my heart. I enjoy that one. For, for accounts, there's five different or six different GPUs where you can limit what can be done or how that account can be used. So for users, I believe only log on locally should be allowed, like RDPing or running a, a shadow task or service is unnecessary. Is for admins, I could imagine, or I think through RDP should be as well as allowed. And for service accounts, these are used as service accounts. <laughs> so these should just be allowed to run services or batch shop, which is a shadow task. Of course, every service account is different, so you need to uh, define it for each account. The three last ones, um, the most important one, we already talked about labs. The GMSA is a group managed service account. We want to get rid of these normal service accounts. There's one password for the account, never changed, it's a never expire, and everybody knows it. Sometimes these are service accounts or even domain admins. So what you can do is use this group managed service account where the password is managed by the Active Directory and nobody knows it anymore and also gets changed regularly. Or if you can't do that, um, reduce permissions, um, do these logon restrictions, logon times. So we have about 10% of group managed service accounts, and we are kind of on the, on the class uh, carpet and can't really find more to switch. What's the most important measure after that core principle should actually should look like this. Because if you use smart cards, so many attacks don't work anymore, especially for admins. And the thing is, that's the only measure on my slides which is not for free, but a modern, a modern um, smart card costs about $40. So even if you have 20, 30, 50 people in IT, that's very, very affordable. And with Windows, it's a charm to roll out. You just install it, and it's just usable. At the end of the day, at the end of the talk, we always need to ask ourselves, did we do the right thing? And how do we know if we did the right thing? Let's go full circle again and listen to the people. For me, if we did the right thing, I know when somebody puts himself on that security train. And there's one of my colleagues who wrote that email where he said, I just removed the last Windows XP machine. And I didn't tell him to do that. He was just really, really proud. And he sent out this email, and I have 10, 15 printed emails like this on my, on my desk in the office. A second one, which I really, really enjoyed by another colleague, uh, I told you we have this monitoring where we get alarmed when there's this new admin, new local admin. So that guy found that out and contacted the guy who's responsible in that country. And I said, why? Why is there a local admin? Please explain it to me. We don't accept local admins. And I just, I just love um, what language he used for this. And you know, we, we just created this, this monitoring, and it's, it's so nice to see how people actually use it in, in a day-to-day -day use. So, talk is over, just to sum it up, what's the three ideas we have? When we talk about people, we should stop complaining and start listening. When we talk about organization, we say make it visible. And we talk about tech, key is the prioritization. Thank you. Thank you, Marius, for your talk. So, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions for this talk. So, um, as always... Uh